Hey, Hal here. Welcome to this episode of Woodsmanship and Life Skills with Pupper and Ryland. In this series, we're going to be teaching you woodsmanship skills, bushcraft, survival skills, and everything else pertaining to the outdoor skills you might need. Hope you enjoy them. next installment of Life Skills with Pupper and Ryland, we're going to talk about axes, hand axes in particular. And uh, there's, there's all kinds of different axes from a split maul to a, a felling axe and a double bitted axe, but this, uh, this here is what we call a, a hand axe. And back in the day, almost every woodsman carried a hand axe with them. And the difference between a hand axe and a regular axe is it's, it's a lighter head on it and a shorter handle, and it's designed to be able to use it with one hand, like you would some people have a hatchet with a real short handle. But with a hatchet, there's not a lot of leverage on it. You just you can chop a little bit, but it's not really a lot of leverage. You can use a hand axe like an axe with two hands and you can split with it if you wanted to. But it's really, it's an all-around tool. It's good for everything. They, the trappers used them. Anybody in the woods, they always carried them, carried them in their pack basket. The head on this is about, usually they're about, oh, a couple of pounds, two and a half pounds, maybe three. This one here is a, is a little heavier than some of them. And this one here, I, I always like to get the old ones at a yard sale if you can find them around old homesteads or flea markets or yard sales because the steel in them is a lot better than the new, than a new axe, which are usually just cast, most of them. These are all hand forged back in the day. This, this particular one here is, I can't read it so old, I can't read the name on it. But a lot of them were made here in Maine, but they were made all over the country too. But the steel was really good. They hand forged them and uh, they'll hold an edge a lot better. And they don't tend to rust like new ones. I mean, you can see some pittings in the old ones. Probably this particular one might have been laying on the ground for a while and got a little pitted, but I've cleaned it up put a decent handle on it, but and this handle's been on it for, I've had it, I carried this quite a few years, and and uh, I split kindling with, with it around the house and stuff. And so anyways, it's time for a little tuning up on it. It's, it's uh, stained up, light, light rust on it. The other thing I've done with it, and it's, you know, it's, you shouldn't, but I've had to a couple of times if I forgot my sledgehammer for putting in uh, tent stakes and stuff, setting up a remote camp, is you can use it for a hammer and it'll work fine. But if you can, I don't know if you can see it, but what it does is it, it rounds the head down and it puts a little rim on it that sticks out. Well, it's not the best thing to use for you axe but it'll work and and uh but it's an all-around tool but what we wanted to do is uh sharpen this first you can oil the handle the handle if you buy a new handle at a hardware store or something they usually got a finish on them and that wears off i like to use linseed oil makes a nice nice finish you can hand rub it in i would sand this back down a little bit with a some sandpaper and but we're going to work on the head and get it. Now you can use a file. File work fine. And file it down both sides. Um, back in the day, they used grinding wheels on a. They pedaled them with their feet, and the, it was a big. It was a big wheel, and you'd go slow with it. Just it would the wheel would go slow, and that would grind it down. You don't want to do sharpen these on a, a bench grinder. Nowadays everybody's, not everybody, but you might have an electric bench grinder with a grinding stone on that that's turning high RPMs. It's 
meant to grind off rough metal and stuff. Don't ever put an axe on one of those grinding wheels. It'll heat the metal up and it'll take the temper out of it. These hand forged axes have got a tempered steel in them. And if you heat those up with a bench grinder, you'll see it'll turn, spots will start turning blue and down in the blade because it's the thinnest and it'll take the temper right out of it and make it so it won't hold an edge anymore. But what I do is I use a, I just use an electric grinder with a sanding disc on it. It's a, they call it a flap wheel or whatever. You can use a regular like a 60 or 80 grit wheel, just a regular sander, but these flappers I like because they don't heat up much either. And I don't keep it on there for a long time. I just, I go real easy with it, do a little bit here, flip it over, do a little bit on the other side, work my way around with it, and, uh, and don't let it heat up. When we're going to sand, the wheel turns a certain way. You want, you want the, the uh, burr, it's going to create a burr on the, on the outside edge, but you flip it over and can get that off. But if you grind it so that it's pushing the burr up towards the wide end, well, it won't, it won't uh, make a sharp burry edge on it. So if we look at this grinder, just touch it for a minute. So the grinder wheel is turning, if it's facing you there, it's turning counterclockwise. So uh, we're going to put it on this here. We're going to have Rylan hold it by the handle, and then I'll do one side a little bit. And we'll flip it over, and I'm going to get this rough edge off. You'll see when we get done, it'll go from a rough looking old saw to a, I mean old axe to a nice looking one. So we got to have our safety glasses, always using a sander or grinder. Safety first. You got to have safety first. And if you're using a, a hand grinder, whether it's a sander on it or a, you know, you can put a cutting wheel or all kinds of attachments on these. Wear your leather gloves because if that just touches you before you can even get that shut off, it's going to take a lot of skin off you. So I'm going to use a little safety here. Go ahead and hold this here, Rylan. Just hold the blade there and we'll. take long, just a few minutes. I've actually got here when I was 
grinding on the bottom there and got the rust off. It says three and a half on it, which means this is three and a half pounds. I knew it was a good three pounder, but it's three and a half. So uh, that's probably on the, the high side of uh, the good average. It's also got, I can see the, some other markings here stamped in from who made it and stuff. Um, I can see here there's a line across. I'll bring it in close in a minute. And when they forge this around to put the handle in, there's a piece, the steel at this end, this upper end here is a is a different steel. It's your high carbon steel probably that is sharper. So I've got it down, I've got the nicks, there was a couple of nicks. Usually you get nicks up at the up at the toe of it because you when you chop and usually you hit down you might hit in the ground or something, but I've got those out. Pretty sharp here. You can finish it with a hand file or a stone if you wanted to, but one thing is is to keep these sharp because a dull axe like a dull saw is more dangerous than a sharp one because you gotta you put more effort in to use it and you'll end up striking something the wrong way and glancing it. So I'm going to give this just a hair more on this and then I'll show you up close what it looks like. We got this, I don't know if you can see that line there with a bed of steel, as you can see it on both sides, you can see where it, it tarnished at a different uh, level than the rest of it. This axe, like I said, is it's got to be a hundred years old, I would think, but again, it's the good steel in it, keeps a, keeps a good edge. So I carry a hand axe just about everywhere. I have one on my snowmobile when I'm in the woods in the winter. You never know when you're going to get stuck or have to cut something out of the way or cut something because you fell through the ice, whatever. But I carry a hand axe all the time. I carry one in my truck in the woods when I'm back in the woods. Important tool. So anyways. Hope you learned a little bit about axes and go out there and get one and keep it sharp. It's a good tool. I'll show you a couple of uses for the hand axe. If you're in the woods, you get in the woods and maybe you got to make a fire or something and, and uh, you need to gather up some wood real quick. So you can just take very simple to limb out these dead limbs for your firewood. Very easy to do that. You might need a you might need a pole for something or a handle, your fry pan, whatever you need. You might need that. Whenever you're cutting wood, if if you don't know, people that don't know about it, they want to cut across like this. That's not how you do it. So you can use this hand axe with two hands and you come down on it at 45 degree angle or something like that. And by doing that, you'll split it right off in a hurry. Could make a spear out of that or something, but that's how you use it. You like two hands, or like I said, it's you choke up on it, and you can do a lot of little things with one hand. But but uh, that's basically it. You use a tool for a lot.